Now, there are some cranial nerves which come as a part of the examination of the ear and maybe in head and neck. So I have just demonstrated you seven cranial nerves. Since we are on the cranial nerve, I can show you how we examine the other cranial nerve. On factory nerve, we should do it, which supplies the sensation of the, uh, of the uh, smell. You do it whenever you are examining the nose. So you use various type of uh, perfumes or various type of uh, solution with various smell and ask the patient. And you approve the one nose and ask the patient whether they can smell it or not. This is a rough uh, examination, a rough idea to give the patient sense of smell. And then if you want to do the uh, optic nerve examination, that is uh, eye visual acuity. As an ENT surgeon, you do not do the visual acuity. But you can have some rough idea about the uh, vision of the patient by taking the history. So I will not go in detail about the optic nerve examination. Now comes the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve, which are involved with the movements of the eye. And you want to see whether there is a paralysis of third, fourth, and sixth, so you want to ask the patient to move his eye with your face. So if there is paralysis of these nerve, then the movement of the eye will be affected. Then you want to see the trigeminal sense now. That is the fifth trigeminal nerve, which is called ophthalmic branch, maxillary branch, and mandibular. So you examine basically it is the sensory nerve. You examine the sensation. So what you do is take a cotton wool and what is the sensation of touch. You explain to the patient that I'm going to touch in various part of your face, and you tell me whether you can feel it or not. And then you compare the both sides. You want to tell me the ophthalmic nerve, the supra orbital area. Patient say he can feel. And then symmetric and on that side. Don't do like that, you do it here and then there. No, symmetrical. Then you see the maxillary region, feel over that. Patient will himself ask the patient to raise their uh, finger because their eyes are closed. Raise your finger, only your finger. Okay, this is there. Okay, the patient eyes are closed, so he does not know. Now I, I have kept at a distance. So if there is a malignant, if he raises the finger, then I, I will know that patient is a malignant. He raises the finger. This is the sensation of touch. Then you can use some sharp object like some hair pen. Here I will use this instrument. This is for corruption home. It is not for this purpose, but I will use it. Same, you have to use it symmetrical. Okay. Exactly symmetrical. So we have done the fifth cranial of examination. We have done the third, fourth, and sixth. And we have done the seventh cranial nerve examination. Eight cranial nerve examination is better vestibular popular. We have I have already demonstrated to hearing test and to have exact threshold we do the audiometry. Then comes the glossopharyngeal vagus accessory hypoglossal nerve. Now glossopharyngeal supplies the sensation to soft palate. So we what we do we put a headlight and we put some roll some cotton on the end of the probe. And check the gag reflex. Gag, that means the glossic pattern is functioning. Okay. Vegas now, if you want to see the whether the uh, uh, Vegas is functioning or not, the recurrent laryngeal nerve supply, which is a branch of the Vegas and it supplies the vocal cord. So if there is a vocal cord paralysis, patient may have Kushner, and then we examine with the indirect laryngoscopy or fiber optic laryngoscopy, which I will demonstrate later. And then comes the And then the accessory nerve. The so accessory nerve has got cervical and spinal part. You are basically checking this cervical part, which supplies the accessory uh, sternum and entry So you ask the patient. You will ask the patient to, uh, to look to the right and try to force a uh, chin to the other side. So you want to see the function of the sternum Right with the right with the and you 
he's trying to turn his neck, not with finger, with his eyes, but with his neck. He's trying to turn like that and applying pressure there. He's got very good function of the sternum as well. Similarly, on this side, you see the patient, and he's trying to look on this left side and I'm applying pressure. If there is a weakness there, so I will, he will not be able to resist my force and his head will move to the other side. And for the trapezius, I will ask the patient to shrug his shoulder. Look at it. And you push, push like that. So he has got adequate power. This is how you get the exercise. And the hypoglossal nerve. If the hypoglossal nerve is paralyzed in acute stage, it will be uh, the tongue will be twisted moved to the right side. In chronic stage, when the uh, hypoglossal nerve has been paralyzed for weeks or months, there will be atrophy of the tongue on that side. Move for it, the bandhikara. If the tongue is in the midline, that means there is no paralysis of hypoglossal. So this is cranial examination.